and welcome back everyone to the video series Dedicate Show on MTV where a team has a new motto. That's right, we're talking about The Challenge Season 38, Episode 12. And let's start off where last episode left off and that was Amber winning against Norris in the Paddle Brawl elimination and coming back to the Challenge House. Amber is getting congratulated, especially from Chauncey. He is so thrilled to have Amber back inside the house. But now it is alarm bells for all the guys in the game, especially on Team Mariah. You have Devin, who desperately wants his team to break their losing streak, because if not, he could be possibly going into an elimination this coming episode, and it's either going to be up against Horacio or Jordan. We have Jordan coming back to the house, and he is feeling pretty down because his cuddle buddy of Norris is eliminated from the game. And then you have Nelson, who is also going to miss having Norris in the game because she is the only person he could trust 100% to have his back moving forward. The next morning, we see Bananas talking to Nani, and he is also nervous about his team possibly losing the upcoming daily challenge because, again, it's a guy's day, and his team is stacked. Then he turns the attention over to Nani, congratulating her for making it this far and being proud of her, especially with all the struggles that she's had to go through, both emotionally. Then the game stress on top of everything she's going through personally, that Bananas says that she is really tough, that he's really proud of her, and Nani, Nani appreciates it. Then we move on to phone calls. Most of the times, it can mean a very bad thing, and... We see Nelson get a phone call from Corey, a fellow TYB, a challenger, team mom OG, as well as a best friend of Nelson. And they're talking. Nelson gives him the lowdown that Nelson and Fessel are working very closely with each other. And Corey is kind of shocked. I was actually shocked that Corey was shocked to hear that Nelson and Fessel are working closely together. He even calls Fessel the enemy, that Nelson is working with the enemy. Corey just tells him to just do what you gotta do to get that championship. And that's when Corey gets motivational with Nelson, tell him to pick his head up, put on your big boy pants, do whatever you got to do because at the end of the day, you are here for your family to get that win, get that championship. And Nelson is all pumped up by the end of this phone call. Then we get a phone call between Jordan and his friend Sasha. And we hear all about Jordan's uh, humanitarian work over in the Ukraine. And it is incredible what Jordan has been able to do on that front, which is very impressive and very commendable. I think it was super awesome awesome to see this on the challenge and to get this story out there was really really awesome who's not feeling awesome is Fessel who is also feeling a little bit of the heat and so he's talking to Mariah and seeing if Mariah would somehow help his team win the daily aka sabotaging her own team to keep Fessel safe her original partner and Mariah's like yeah but didn't you just win last episode and that was a woman's day like did you at least try to throw something or help me out? I don't see you really helping me out last time. Now, the next day, before heading down to the Daily Challenge to meet up with TJ for this week's Daily Challenge, we see Team Mariah talking in the gym area, having a team meeting, trying to get on the same page. And this is where we see Devin's leadership trying to get everybody to believe in themselves, believe in the team, believe in one solid direction. Devin takes a hold of the leadership, gets everybody to believe that they are all dogs and that they are team underdogs. Now, speaking of this week's daily challenge, everybody does get on their challenge gear, meet up with TJ by the water, where then we see a helicopter. TJ takes over talking about this week's daily challenge called Chopper Drop, where players are gonna be holding on to bars that are hanging on the bottom of this helicopter. They're gonna be flown over different colored targets that players are going to have to jump into. Of course, the longer you hold on to the helicopter and the farther you go, the targets go up in points. TJ also mentions that there's strategy involved because only two people can drop into a target at a time. Once everybody is dropped, then they have to make their way swimming from whatever target they dropped into all the way to the finishing dock. Once all the team members are on the finishing dock, your time will be stopped. Now, only six players can drop. So even Fessel, who has two extra players, they're going to have to sit on special docks to where 
Once Team Fessel has dropped all of their players from the helicopter, then those players on the special docks will jump into the water and swim to the finishing dock. Team with the most points by the end of this challenge will win. However, if both teams are tied in points, then it comes down to the team that can get to the finishing dock the quickest with all of its members touching the dock. The team with the quickest time will ultimately win this challenge. It will come down to time as both teams have very similar strategies. Both end with the same amount of points. Now in heat one, it is team Fessel up first with everybody holding on to the poles underneath the helicopter except for Olivia and Anissa. They take their spots on the extra buoys. The two people that Drop first is Casey and Tori. They drop first. They each get 50 points each. Then Fessel and Bananas drop for 70 points each. And then Nelson and Chauncey wait. They are going to drop into the little pink target to then get 100 points each. They max out in points. And they are all running and swimming to get to the buoy. Fessel actually helps out his team, helping Olivia swim to get to the finishing dock. However, you have Casey and Tori who dropped the earliest out of everybody is really struggling on this swim. The water is cold. It's hard to catch your breath when you're like freezing and shaking while trying to swim that long distance, but ultimately they get to the platform and their time is stopped. Now this is where we go to heat two, team Mariah or AKA team underdog as they are roughing and toughing and barking up a storm to get this win. And they have a very similar strategy to Team Fessel with one difference, and that is after Jordan and Horacio drop, they will swim back to help get their teammates to the finish platform quicker. You have Nani and Mariah dropping first, getting 50 points each. Then you have Amber and Devin dropping second, getting 70 points each. Then you have Jordan and Horacio. Now I want to say I'm very impressed with how Jordan is able to hold on as this was difficult. I even thought of this last week after the episode. I was like, how is he going to hold on with only one hand? Are they, is he going to have to hold on with only one arm? Because that's going to be really, really difficult. Maybe he'll drop first. Instead, he's going to drop last. He's basically bear hugging the bar. However, when taking a look at this, I had to pause the TV. I put it in slow motion. I was re-watching it. And I don't know if Jordan and Horacio actually fell into the last target. Now, we don't see the impact. We don't see the fall of where they actually fall into because I think that this filming was very strategic. But it just when I replayed it over and over and over again, it just didn't seem like Horacio and Jordan fully dropped into like the center of the target. Maybe they fell onto the target. So maybe if they even hit the outside edging border of the target, it still counts even if you, as long as you hit some point of the target, you win. They do receive the points. So now we are tied. It all comes down to the swim. Jordan and Horacio, instead of going to the finish dock, go all the way back to meet up with everybody. They're helping. They're pushing the women and Devin to get further in the swim to make it quicker. And they get there and have their time stop. We hear from TJ that only two seconds separate these teams and Team Underdog, aka Team Mariah, wins this daily challenge, getting all the power and now we have Team Fessel, mainly the men, are going to be in the hot seat and trying to figure out how each person can stay safe. Now we get back to the challenge house and Nelson and Fessel are having a conversation. They're a little nervous. They're hoping that they're at least going to be in the draw because they would save themselves. They would have the best opportunities to keep each other safe. They just don't want to go up against each other in the zone. And once they say it, I was like... It's gonna happen. We also get a little strategy from Bananas and Chauncey where they make a deal with each other that they're going to keep each other safe. If they are in the draw together and either one of them pulls the safe dagger, they would save each other. This is where we get to the deliberations and Devin takes charge and this is where he pulls out a piece of paper and he wants to do his plan called Operation Save Chauncey and trying to make the best of this power and really put in powerful people to take out somebody else that is powerful and really weaken Team Fessel. Amber, of course, loves this plan because it saves Chauncey. And she mentions to everybody that Chauncey and Bananas has a deal. So ultimately, those two should not be the main vote. 
and we should put in either Nelson or Fessel, and this is where Nani endorses, let's vote for Nelson. We go to the interrogation, and just like every single interrogation, majority of people are not saying any names, they're not really giving any details, they're giving vague answers to who would they save, who would should be the main vote. Nobody wants to throw anybody under the bus, that is except for Bananas. Bananas, on the other hand, was like, yeah, you see my seven championships, but I haven't been playing that well. Now, look at Fessel. Fessel has been showing up this season. Mariah is like between a rock and a hard place. She likes Bananas. Her original partner is Fessel, and Fessel told Mariah never to ever vote for Nelson. So... She's like, what do I do? We move on to a conversation between Devin and Jordan after the deliberation, the second deliberation, the interrogation, and they're trying to figure out, okay, we can make this happen. Who should we throw in? And Jordan really wants to take a shot at Fessel. Fessel is a really strong player this season. He's one of, if not the best player over on his own team, as well as Jordan wants to test Fessel. He makes a great observation that the more times you see eliminations, the better chance you can send somebody home. And Fessel just has not been tested over his challenge tenure yet enough. And Jordan really wants to see what Fessel can do when the elimination isn't a hall brawl or a pole wrestle. And I love that line of thinking because it makes a ton of sense and I love it. This is where we jump to the next day and we see Jordan and Fessel talking before heading to the elimination and Jordan essentially gives Fessel his word that he will not say Fessel's name in the voting. Now, we hear from Fessel later on that this was two hours prior to the elimination. So, two hours before the elimination or heading out to the elimination, Jordan gives Fessel his word that he will not vote for him to be the main vote. However, this is where we hear from Jordan that an hour later, an hour right before heading to the Elimination, Jordan is working out, and Tori comes up to Jordan and puts in her two cents of what Jordan should do, and she really doesn't want Fessel to be the main vote. She doesn't want to see Fessel being in the elimination. But at this point, if it's like 50-50 between Nelson and Fessel, I mean, it'll come down to the draw then, because even if Fessel is in the draw, then he's going to have to pull the safe sword or he's going in. So anyways, so we have Tori talking to Jordan, trying to persuade him to vote for Nelson. Now, Jordan, we've seen him be a man of his word for a long time now in the game. So he's like, I will do what I say. If I gave somebody my word, I will not go back on it. I am a, I am a man of integrity. This is where Tori kind of wants to hammer the hammer at home. Like, OK, well, do it or this could really affect our relationship now. I was confused by this terminology because what constitute the relationship? Is this a possible rekindling of a romantic relationship outside of the game? Is this talking about a friendship? Is this talking about a business relationship, game relationship? What does that mean? And it rubs Jordan the wrong way. He's like, I told you that I am a man of my word and now you're trying to leverage a different sort of power against me that now makes me want to do the exact opposite of what I said I was going to do. And this happens when we meet up with TJ at the zone and he calls all four men to join him on the zone floor. He turns to Jordan and basically Jordan says that Tori used their relationship as a bargaining chip, as a hostage to do what she wants him to do and make the decision that is best for her team and herself. And... That just rubbed him the wrong way. And he says, I'm not going to stand for it. And so for that reason, now I have to go back on my word. And it's all because of Tori. And so, boom, I'm voting in Fessel. Now, I'm going to get into more of this on tomorrow's Tiny Table Talk. But we do see Tori getting very frustrated with Jordan, kind of putting the blame on her, saying, that's not what I said. That's not what I said. We didn't get the full conversation, clearly from what we saw was cut out to what we got to the final product. But from the edit, it made it seem like Tori was kind of trying to leverage the relationship, 
the friendship, whatever ship it was, she was trying to use that as leverage to get her way. I have so much to say about this and how this all went down. Again, I'll get into it in tomorrow's Tiny Table Talk. We get to the rest of the voting. Fessel gets three votes, Jordan, Devin, Horacio. Nelson gets two votes, and Amber and Nani. It comes down to Mariah. The only person she can vote for is Nelson. It ties up. Guess what TJ's gonna say? Okay, now you're gonna have to make a decision. Everybody, vote for only Fessel and Nelson, and you have to come up with a decision between those two. And if they can't come up with a unanimous decision, then it's going to blow up in their faces and possibly Jordan, Devin, and Horacio now are going to be possibly up for elimination, which is not going to help Mariah's team whatsoever. It could definitely help Fessel, but it's not going to help Team Mariah. So Mariah decides that I'm going to just burn vote, which I think is the right move. It would have been a bad decision to vote for Nelson to tie it up, to then have a fight at the zone to try to get either the three to vote for Nelson or the three to vote for Fessel because I feel like somebody would strong on the other one and then you're in a very bad position. Mariah did the right thing by burn voting. Fessel is going directly into the elimination. Then we have the draw. Bananas goes down there, pulls a dagger, and it is blank. Chauncey goes in there, pulls the dagger, and it is safe. Chauncey saves Bananas, sending Nelson in against Fessel in this week's elimination called Spearheaded. Where in this game you have all these spears stuck in drywall in various parts of this cube. What you're going to have to do is untangle the chain that connects everything and every spear. Once you do that, now you have to pull out all the spears and put them in your box. The person that can untangle the, all the spears and then take out nine of them and put them in their box first wins this elimination, stays in this game. We see both men untangling the chains. They both get through the chains very closely together. It comes down to pulling out these spears and it was very close where Vessel was getting out spears quicker than Nelson, but Nelson was very close behind him. However, as the game went on, Nelson was kind of losing out the endurance. He said his arms were kind of given out and Vessel just had more gas in the tank at the end of the day where he was able to get nine spears out and in his box as Nelson came up short this season and in this elimination, he was eliminated. I'll tell you right now, this editing was very powerful as I like I felt bad for Nelson. I felt bad that he had to go up against Fessel. I'm glad it wasn't like it was in Double Agents. It wasn't anything physical where they had to like face each other, where it was gonna be this huge difference in size and weight, and it just would have been super unfair for Nelson. I felt both men had a shot in this elimination, and sadly, Nelson was eliminated. I mean, this was a really good showing, a really good season for Nelson, so I'm happy that he says that he is going to work out harder, both physically and mentally. Um, we saw both Olivia and Nelson embrace. They had some nice words at the end of this episode, despite they are not following each other at this time currently. So it's tough when you're watching a show in a different time and era months before this when feelings and love could be still fluttering around inside them to where now it's not so lovey-dovey anymore. But it was nice to see them embrace. Nelson was very happy. He still had a smile on his face as he walked out the zone. And that's when everybody exits to go back to the challenge house. However, this is where we see Nelson come back into the zone. And TJ is talking to Nelson about the twist and that Narice has not gone home, that she had a chance of coming back into the game and you guys could have been partnered up if you would have stayed in the game. And this is when we see Norris coming back into the zone. They embrace Nelson and Norris, And this is when TJ announces that they have been officially eliminated from the season. Kind of reminds me of like the amazing race when Phil has to tell both people that they are officially eliminated from the race. But he tells both Norris and Nelson that they are done, that this is their season is over. That is it for this week's episode. At looking at the previews to next week's episode, it looks like things are popping off. We have people get into fights. There are tears. There is anger. There is sadness, confusion. 
I'm excited. I'm excited for next week's episode. And I thought this week's episode was actually pretty decent. I liked the daily challenge. I thought it was a pretty good elimination. I'm happy to see Team Fessel get to sweat a little bit. I'm happy that there was some form of strategy going on inside of everybody, making deals, trying to stay safe in the draw. And we finally have a leader step up on Team Mariah, Team Underdog with Devin kind of stepping it up. I'm 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 happy. I was happy with this team result and I'm happy that we finally got to see Fessel in an elimination that was not a hall brawl, a pole wrestle, something physical where putting hands on a player that is significantly smaller than him was just a huge advantage because I felt like at least this elimination felt balanced that both men could have had a shot to win this. But alas, Nelson was eliminated and this is it for this video and this week's episode. What'd you think about this episode? Let me know down in the comment section below. What'd you think about the daily challenge? What'd you think about Devin stepping up as a leader for Team Mariah, Team Underdog? What do you think about the Team Underdog? What'd you think about their decision to send in Fessel? And what do you think about Tori and Jordan's conversation? I wanna hear what you have to say. And what do you think about Nelson and Reese being eliminated from the game? Are you sad to see them go? Let me know anything and everything down in the comments section below. I want to give a special shout out. Thank you to everyone who supports me over at patreon.com slash angelcakevids. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to everyone who is watching this video up to this point. I'll be back really, really soon with more challenge 38 content, more challenge content, more content in general. But until then, peace.